Hello everyone, um, I have emerged from marking. Um, <clears throat> hopefully um, you all had a great week. What I would really like to see some um, practice with you with your activities is having a go with the constant concept mapping um, apps. I'm going to put a list of them up there today um, because I think the more you practice with them the easier it's going to be for your assignment and I think with this next assignment, because you're using three different ways of presenting information, um, it is going to be really important that we practice with concept mapping. So it's not that app that is holding you back from doing really well. So um, I know Murray mentioned the app um, in his last lecture. So have a look, have a play with it. Use it to answer the questions this week. Um, coming up or even have a go with previous ones just so you're practicing using the concept mapping apps because the more you practice the better you are same as anything um, okay now on to this assignment I've just finished marking it Michelle I've been trying to email you can you please get in touch with me I really need to talk to you before the assignment results are released so um, yeah make sure that you get back to me as soon as you can or check your email or let me know if it's not going through because I'm sort of wondering. I know you're always on the DP, so um, yeah, if you could get back to me, that would be great. Um, all right, this assignment, I was really, really pleased with our group as a whole. Um, the top score was 20, thinking, thinking 23, um, but there were a lot or quite a few around between 19 and 2021 20, ish. Um, and that's to be expected because it's your first assessment and that to me is absolutely brilliant that we have got so many people who've put so much work in. This is traditionally um, an assignment that has a lot of fails. So <laughs> we didn't have many in our group and I was really, really, really pleased um, with how you managed to think about um, how this would apply to a classroom, giving examples of problem solving in the classroom, really showing that you will make great educators of the future because you're really thinking about this, being fair, not putting generalizations over whole populations. And I was I was really impressed with the depth of answers. A lot of the problem um, was making sure that you were referring to sources, not just using previous experience, which is great, but it's always good to find um, sources that back up those previous experiences as well, even if they're like government documents or something like that. So you could say in the Australian curriculum, it says blah, 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 or in the early years learning framework, it says blah, blah, blah. Some people did this and that was fantastic. But I was really overall so happy with the level of work you guys are doing. So as and as comparison to other groups as well, because we all moderate between the groups to just check that we're on the right path and we're not just in an incredibly happy mood and giving everybody brilliant scores. Um, so so that that was um, great to see. Well done. Um, right. So this week, we were still going on week four. Well, I was still participating in week four because everyone was still there, but I think that was because of the assignments. Some people got on to week five. Corinne got her textbook and now she's doing beautiful referencing of all the different chapters. I can see you've been doing a lot of reading, Corinne. Fabulous work. Um, and Michelle gave us a really good example up there. Okay. Now, attention and motivation are very, very, very important. And Michelle, you've given us some great examples. It'd be really good to put on those examples exactly where you got all these ideas from, or if you've got any um, pages, web pages, etc., other than that's the teach.com blog management. Maybe even put the link up there because these will be really good when people get into their placement. So if you can do that, that would be fantastic. Thank you. I will get in and answer these soon because I was still too busy on week four because that was. Um, really happening up there. <laughs> uh, Cameron, great work here. Some really good citations. Um, when you put the citations in, and this is just a note, not just for Cameron, but for a lot of people that I was marking, um, there's, you can see at the end of a sentence, there's a full stop. When you put the citation in, like you put O'Donnell et al. 2016, page 347, which you've done perfectly, you don't need the full stop 
after the end of a sentence before the beginning of the bracket. So you don't need to have that there. It's very minor, but um, it's something that people pick up all the time. So um, I can see Cameron's using mnemonic strategies. I think we had a few people discussing the mnemonic strategies. These are really, really useful as um, studying in adults. And when you get to the e-test in this unit, mnemonic strategies are brilliant to be using. Um, so it's great that you're going in and looking at these as well as being able to teach them um, to children. This is much about mindfulness as well. So if you look at the self-regulation literature and the mindfulness literature about teaching children how to learn, rather than teaching them the information, you're teaching them strategies that will be useful in their future. Because as we become more and more bombarded with information, and having to study and do more is so important that they learn these strategies for themselves and it's the same for you. Learning these sort of strategies will really help you with your study. Ah, Garanji, you've done some great examples there as well. Um, could you, yeah, the teacher says one, two, eyes on you is very, very popular and has many different varying rhymes that you can add into that. Um, if you could put where you got some of these suggestions from, there are more brilliant suggestions that will be really good on your placement. Um, and the information in various learning styles, why do you think that is important? I think I know where you're coming from because you have looked at the multiple intelligence stuff, but this is really, really important because you're appealing to so many different children. And if you think about it, as we've talked, the classrooms now are inclusive. They're inclusive education classrooms. So if you've got deaf children, you've got children that have different types of learning disabilities, the more ways of providing information, the more likely you are to get it across and the more likely you are for them to be able to understand what is going on. So that, that is absolutely brilliant. And Dylan, you've been in here and looking at cognitive perspective and put your references in beautifully. Um, yeah. You've got a really good example in there about the beach. Well done. It is great to see people bringing in these real life examples into all their answers. Uh, and I love it shows you show you've got a really good idea of what cognitive perspective is. Um, I think cognitive perspective is really, really important, especially in the classroom at the moment. Uh, most of the schools and the curriculum is based on a cognitive perspective. So make sure you understand that because you'll be able to bring that in um, to your next assignment. Anyway, that's it for today. Thank you for all the participation. I think we had over 31 posts last week, which is brilliant. There's some really good conversations happening up there. Um, and it's, it's so good to see people actually really involved in it and applying these things to their own lives. Because that is the only way all this information, which is the sort of scaffold of teaching, is going to be able to really help you when you get into the classroom. So keep up the great work. I hope you um, understand my comments in your assignments. If you have any questions at all, feel free to email me. Um, when they get released, they get released on Tuesday, I'm pretty sure John was saying. Um, so once they're released... And if you've got any comments or questions or don't understand what I was talking about, um, please get back to me and I will be happy to walk you through it because you've got to look at that assignment as the interim assignment leading up to the next assignment. So this is the assignment where I look at how you're going and what we can really build on so we can get a brilliant mark in the next assignment because that's worth 50%. So, um, yeah, keep your eyes out for the different concept map apps and things I put up there. I'll try and get some up there today and tomorrow. And then you can try answering using those. That would be really great to see. Okay, have a great week and I'll speak to you soon. Bye.